Characteristics of Absolute Function. I'm Anil Kumar and this video is designed for students of grade 10, 11 and 12. Those who are doing functions and advanced functions course and who want to know more about absolute functions. So on this sheet of paper I have listed the possible characteristics which we will discuss in this video. I'd like you to pause the video, write down whatever you know about it and then watch the video to understand them in greater details. Absolute function f of x is equals to absolute of x. These two bars indicate absolute function and absolute value as you know is always positive. So basically let's define it first. So f of x which is equals to absolute value of x can be written as a combination of piecewise function, right? Now if x is positive that means if x is greater than or equal to 0, then absolute value of x is same as x, right? But if x is negative, that means if x is less than 0, in that case, it changes the sign, right? Negative 3 absolute is positive 3. That means negative of negative 3. So I can write in general negative x, right? So that is how the absolute function is defined. I hope that definition is absolutely clear. Now we'll try to sketch this function here on this graph. And for that, we need some key points. Now, absolute value key points. What should be the key points taken so that you can easily draw absolute function? Well, it's kind of a straight line in both the quadrants, quadrant one and two. So five points are enough for us. So for key points, I'll recommend you to take values like, uh, so let me just take some values here and then we'll see how to sketch them. So we'll write x values here and f of x which is absolute x there. So let's take some negative values and some positive. Let's start with minus 4. So if x is minus 4, f of x is x is less than 0, so it'll be negative of minus 4 which is plus 4, right? If x is minus 3, in that case absolute value of minus 3 is 3, right? For 2, minus 2 it is 2. For minus 1, it is positive 1. For 0, it is 0, right? So normally we don't assign any sign to 0, but 0 is considered always positive. Anyway, and for values like 1, 2, and 3, and even 4, these are all greater than 0. So the x values and fx values are same. So f of x will be 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively, correct? As you can see from here, the absolute function f of x has negative of x values if x is less than 0, right? And the same as fx, which is the definition, right? So that is how you have to understand this piecewise function, right? I hope that's absolutely clear. Now it's a good idea to sketch. So for minus 4 x value, the y value is plus 4. That means minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So that is it's not very clear here, but in any case, let me just approximate this point, right? So minus 3, 1, 2, 3, positive 3, minus 2, 1, 2, minus 1, plus 1, 0, 0, right? And similarly, we'll have the values on the other side of 0, which is 0, with, my, with plus 1 it is 1, with 2 it is 2, with 3 it is 3, and with 4 it is going to be 4, right? So basically all fall in a straight line, right? So these points which we have here, we could have had any number of points in between these also, correct? So basically it's all real numbers is the domain. So what we can do is we cannot connect them. We are connecting these values since we know that the absolute function has all these points included, right? In their domain. So that is how it is. So that becomes f of x equals to absolute value of x, right? Now x is on the x-axis and y which is f of x is absolutely. So now we have this graph which you can see is in quadrant 2 and 1, right? Now let's write down domain and range for this graph. Now what is the domain for this graph? The domain for this graph is all real numbers. It could have any value from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So domain we can write x belongs to real numbers so that 
well there's no condition so x belongs to real number that is like this or we could have written minus infinity to plus infinity as the domain for absolute x how about the range as far as the range is concerned always positive values are returned right so it's non-negative real numbers which could be written as range as equals to y belongs to real numbers so that y is greater than or equal to 0 right so that is the range or in interval notation you could also write this as from 0 to infinity where 0 is included right so let me write in a different thing so sometimes we do write it in interval set this is a set notation right so you could also write this as including 0 right till infinity positive which is never included right now the second characteristics relative to the graph is quadrants now it is important to note that absolute functions is always in quadrant 1 and 2 the parent absolute function right well if you transform it could be in any quadrant so this is our quadrant 1 and here we have quadrant 2 this is quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 so as you can see it is in quadrant 1 and 2 so normally we prefer to write from 2 to 1 whenever you read a graph you read it from left to right right and therefore we'll say quadrants 2 and 1 right I know better was 1 and 2 but we'll read the graph from left to right say for purposely I'm writing quadrant 2 first and then quadrant 1 symmetry this graph has even symmetry even symmetry means there is a mirror image and mirror being y-axis so if we have a point here there's a mirror image right there so we have to every corresponding point on the left side of y-axis there is a point on the right side right so it has a symmetry and this symmetry is called even symmetry right so it is even symmetry in even symmetry you know f of x is equals to f of minus x so let me write f of minus x equals to f of x that is what we are trying to say when we say even symmetry symmetric about y-axis right so it is symmetric about y-axis let me write here okay now then the characteristics of defining any parent functions or any function for that matter intercepts is very important here we see origin is both x and y intercept right so the intercept points are our origin in this case right so we can write origin which is 0 comma 0 for x intercept and even for y intercept is the same point right so basically in absolute function we do see a corner here so the typical thing here is we have a corner at origin so why I'm saying corner at origin it is a distinguishing feature of absolute function now if you compare it with parabola or a quadratic parent function x squared this kind of curved surface here not a corner but otherwise very similar right here we have straight lines and corner that's kind of distinguishing feature of absolute function so these characteristics symmetric about y-axis that is even symmetry and straight lines and the corner they are very distinguishing features of absolute function increasing interval so as you can see it in increases from 0 to infinity so it increases in quadrant 1 right so let me write in quadrant 1 it is increasing and that is from 0 to infinity right so normally when we write increasing and decreasing intervals we don't really include the points right so I have not included 0 in this case decreasing interval is in quadrant 2 so I'm just writing quadrant 2 here for reference right but real answer is from minus infinity to zero right so that is the interval during which absolute function is decreasing correct now let's talk about n behavior now what do you understand by n behavior yes n behavior is what happens to the value of the function as x increases towards negative infinity or towards positive infinity that is what is n behavior so let's look into it if x is very large negative value that means if x is approaching negative infinity what happens to y value 
it approaches positive infinity, right? So at this time, y approaches positive infinity, right? Now, how about when x approaches positive infinity? If x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches positive infinity, right? So it is like both sides are approaching positive infinity. That is the end behavior, both sides up, right? Like in a parabola, x squared. Now, here we have rate of change. Now, rate of change is a very distinguishing feature of absolute function. You will see rate of change is kind of slope on the graph. So, if I draw any line here, then we know what is the slope. Slope is negative 1 in quadrant 1, right? So, in the interval from minus infinity to 0, right, that means in quadrant 2, rate of change is negative 1. At this interval, rate of change is equals to negative 1. I hope you understand in short form what I'm trying to write. But in quadrant 1, when we're talking about the interval 0 to infinity, in this interval, rate of change is equals to positive 1. It's constant. It's positive 1, right? It's like a like straight line y equals to x, right? So here, the equation of the line, you could write this as y equals to x, right, as it is written here. And this is y equals to minus x, right, y equals to minus x, right. So this is y equals to minus x. So minus 1 is the slope of the line for quadrant 2 in absolute function, right. So I hope with this, I have put most of the characteristics in one spot, right. Now, let me highlight the characteristics which are distinguishing features of absolute functions and we'll go from here. One of them is rate of change. The rate of change being negative 1 in quadrant 2 and positive 1 in quadrant 1, which is from 0 to infinity, right? So that is a very distinguishing feature for this. Second is even symmetry, right? It is symmetric about y-axis then x and y intercept are at the origin and most important they have a corner right so corner is is a very typical characteristics amongst all the parent functions which you are studying this is the only function which has a corner right so these characteristics distinguish absolute functions from other functions right so make a note of this so that it helps you to answer related questions I hope that helps you to understand absolute functions better. We'll explore them in greater details in the next section. Thank you and all the best.